Hey friends, Ash here with 10 Cents coming at you guys with a tag video today. I was tagged by Chris at Fragmental, so shout out to Chris and the link in the description to his channel. The video today is my top three fragrances from my top three designer houses. And since this is a tag video, I'm also gonna tag Cam at Carolina Fragrance Reviews, Tommy at Studio Scents, and Josh at Scent Scents. And one other thing before I jump into this, in a recent video, I made mention that Luca Turin now has a YouTube channel and I was supposed to put in the description a link to his channel and I forgot to do that until over a day later. So I'm gonna mention that again and this time I actually have a link in the description. So make sure to check out his channel, tons of great information on fragrances on his channel. Now let's jump into this. Okay, a couple things before we jump into the actual fragrance houses. I could just do the top three houses, top three fragrances, knock it out and be done with it, but I will mention a few other fragrances from other houses that I feel like I should mention. And another thing, I'm not including discontinued fragrances, or at least not discontinued fragrances that are really hard to find. So for the most part here, I'm trying to keep it to fragrances you can still readily find. Okay, first house, Dior, first fragrance, Dior Homme Intense. This one has iris, ambrette, lavender, and cedar. That's some of the notes in the fragrance. Iris is really what the Dior Homme line was built around, that iris note. Now you had some stragglers like Dior Homme Cologne, but now it looks like Dior could be taking this line in a different direction, which is a shame. The iris and Dior Homme Intense, or really most of those Dior Homme fragrances that I mentioned before, had an iris that people called makeup-y or lipsticky. Uh, actually, Dior Homme Intense for a long time was referred to as a metrosexual fragrance. To me, it smells amazing. One of the better designer fragrances I've ever smelled. It has great performance. It lasts and lasts and lasts. It projects heavily. It's a fantastic formal or nighttime fragrance and great in cool weather. Dior Homme Intense, one of my favorite designers of all time, so that one's pretty easy. The next fragrance, gonna be Fahrenheit Le Parfum. This one I kind of waffled on between the original Fahrenheit Eau de Toilette and the Parfum, but going with the Parfum. This has rum, suede, mandarin orange, of course, it has violet, and this one is just really rich. It's got that booziness, it's got sweetness. It's, at least for nowadays, maybe an easier fragrance to wear than the original Fahrenheit EDT is. There's a really good amount of vanilla in the fragrance, a solid amount of vanilla. So if you're a big fan of that note, definitely check this one out. It is occasionally more difficult to find than some of the other fragrances on this list or in this video, uh, but you can still find it with regularity at discounters. So that makes the second fragrance from Dior and some of the ones that I would have liked to have included, but can't because of the discontinuation or fragrances like Dior Homme O, Fahrenheit Absolute, or even Aqua Fahrenheit. And the last fragrance from Dior is going to be Dior Homme, just the original Dior Homme, not Dior Homme 2020. So this one has iris, cacao, lavender, and leather. It's got a lot of similarities to Dior Homme Intense, which you would expect, but this one a little bit easier to wear in more neutral situations like early fall or even spring. This one really is because of my love of the way the Dior Homme line uses iris. It smells awesome, I love it. Of course, Dior Homme 2020 took that and turned it on its head. If you're really interested in Dior Homme, make sure it's not Dior Homme 2020, unless that's what you're after. So if you go to a store and it says 2020 new packaging or something like that, that is not the Dior Homme I'm referencing. I love the way the iris is used in this fragrance. It smells awesome, that one wraps up Dior. Now a house I'd like to mention that is not in my top three, Isi Miyake, and it's really just because of their evening fragrances, they're cool weather fragrances. More specifically, Pulse of the Night, Noir Ombre, and Noir Argent. Those fragrances, all three, I love them. Uh, I feel like I should mention them, just because I really do think they're fantastic, but they just barely didn't make the cut. Okay, next house in the official three, if you wanna call it that, Prada. And Prada is really well known for their clean, soapy fragrances, they're really nice for spring, summer, and fall and occasionally winter, depending on the fragrance. First fragrance from Prada is gonna be Loam Intense. This one really nice for fall, really nice for winter. It's got iris, it's got tonka, it has leather. The iris though in this one, not the same as the iris in the Dior Homme fragrances. The style of iris in the Prada Loam fragrances is much more on the clean, soapy side of things, and that's how it is here. 
but you have darker notes to kind of contrast with that, which is where this fragrance works really well in cool weather. Second fragrance from Prada is gonna be Luna Rosa Black, which is a fragrance I fell in love with right away. It smells a little bit like a mix of Midnight in Paris, the now discontinued Van Cleef and Arpels fragrance, Luna Rosa Sport, just a little touch of that, and Bulgari Black. So this one has Tonka, Amber, Angelica, Bergamot, and Musk as some of the notes in the fragrance. As far as designer scents go, even though I said it is a combination of a few different designers, or you could say it smells like that, it's really unique. And it's actually a big compliment puller as well. It grabs a lot of attention. It's, uh, it's a great cool weather fragrance, a great night out fragrance. And then the third one from Prada is gonna be Loam Low. So in the same line as Loam Intense, obviously, only this one is more for spring and summer wear, and it also makes use of that soapy clean iris. There are also powdery notes in here in Neroli and Ginger, so if you don't like a fragrance that has a bit of powder, you may not like it, but as far as classy designer fragrances that are great for warm weather, this one is a killer. So those are gonna be the three from Prada, Loam Intense, Loam Low, Luna Rosa, Black. And now I'm gonna run through just really quickly some houses that I love, that I feel like I need to mention, even though they're not in the official top three, if you wanna call it that. First off, uh, Giorgio Armani. Aqua de Joe was one of the most important fragrances to me. I wore it like crazy when I was younger, when I was a teen. So Aqua de Joe Profundo, that one could make the list since that's the newest in the Aqua de Joe line. Um, Armani Code Absolue, that one I love. I've talked about that over and over and over again, but those two from Armani could have potentially made this. Uh, Mugler. Another house very easily could have made this list. Uh, Mugler Cologne, which is now known as Come Together. Um, Pure Malt and Pure Havan. Those would have been the three had I gone with Mugler. And that was probably the, the first house out, if you want to call it that. Uh, Paco Rabanne with One Million Privé and Pure Excess. Love both of those. Uh, Versace has a number of fragrances I like, but the last house gonna have to be Chanel. The quality of the Chanel fragrance is very high, very high, and pretty much everybody knows that, so I'm preaching to the choir there. First fragrance from Chanel that's gonna make the top three is actually Bleu de Chanel. Now, a lot of people may not include Bleu de Chanel in their top three from Chanel, but for me, that one is almost like the pinnacle of designer blue fragrances. I feel like quality-wise, it's the, the highest quality, it's the benchmark for blue fragrances on the designer level. Versatility wise, can't be beat. You can use it literally any situation you could ever think of. It's gonna work. It's got a lot of class to it. It's a lot more sophisticated than most of the designer blue fragrances you're gonna find on the market. And uh, it just works for me. It, it's been a fragrance that has been like a workhorse for me over the years. Uh, it's kind of like a Ventus in the style that you just pick it up, spray it on and go. It really does not matter, like I mentioned before, where you're going, it's gonna work. People are gonna like it. Now, you could say that it's a little bit played out, that a whole, whole mess of people out there wear a Bleu de Chanel all the time, but that really just speaks to uh, how wearable and versatile the scent is. And obviously, that's what they were going for, and they pulled it off. It's got grapefruit, incense, ginger, and vetiver, among uh, many other notes. Of course, there are three different versions now, the Eau de Toilette, the Eau de Parfum, and the Parfum. So you kind of have <laughs> your choice to further fine tune the situation that you're wearing Blue de Chanel in. And for me, I'm not gonna single out whether it's the EDT, EDP, or the Parfum here that I'm talking about, just Blue de Chanel. After that, we'll go with the Lure Homme Edition Blanche. This one, a lot of people will say, smells like a lemon meringue pie. And that's a, a pretty good descriptor of the fragrance. It does have this creamy sweet lemon. And a lot of that sweetness is gonna come from vanilla, which there's a good amount of in this fragrance. There's also pink pepper, there's bergamot. And this one is just a great change of pace, warm weather fragrance. Nothing else really smells just like this. The Allure Ohm line has a lot of fragrances that are very well liked by the vast majority of people. And this one is the one for me that I like the most. Now, for a while, Oh Extreme got a lot of hype, a lot of people talking about that one. Allure Home Sport kind of, you know, is the, the OG as far as big compliment pulling flankers of the Allure Home line go. Uh, but for me, it's gotta be this one. That lemon and vanilla combo 
really does it for me. Thumbs up. Now, the last one is gonna be for me, Poor Monsieur. I love, love, love this fragrance, and this one also makes heavy use of lemon and vanilla, just like the last one, but in a completely different way. There's also nutmeg and lavender in this fragrance, and this one is maybe a little more grown up than uh, the Justine Blanche is. It's one that you could wear formally a little bit easier, but at the same time has extreme likability, wearability, versatility. The original Pour Monsieur came out, I believe, in the 50s. So this is a fragrance DNA that's been around for a really long time, but there's a reason for that. It works. The fragrance smells amazing. It's one I fell in love with the first time I smelled it. Fantastic. Big, 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 big thumbs up to Chanel for this one. I had also thought of going with Platinum Egoist or just the original Egoist, but for me, Pour Monsieur just has a little more something to it than those two just something that really lures me in uh, the sweetness mixing with the the spices in there everything else uh, in the fragrance just melts together perfectly so there we go chanel pour monsieur gonna wrap up chanel and that will wrap up my top three designer fragrance houses and the top three designer fragrances from each of those now one thing i, I should say is that depending on which day you catch me and i've made this qualifier in the past my opinion could change. There could be one day where I'm just really, really in the mood for Platinum Ego East, for example, and I may say, oh, this is definitely one of my top three Chanel's. It just kind of depends on what mood I'm in, I guess. But as of when I'm shooting this, these are the fragrances. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for me. Top three favorite fragrances from my top three designer houses. Again, shout out to Chris at Fragmental and to the guys I tagged, get on it. Thanks everybody for hanging out with me. Thanks for all your support. Stay safe out there and I'll see you guys tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys.